Introducing the hosts of Wrestling with Freddy, Jeff Dye and Freddy Prince Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling with Freddy, Wrestling with Friends. And this week is the second half of our two-parter where we take you, the people, the, the Frederation, the Frienderation. We take your questions, and in this week, you get to hear yourselves, so I hope your voices are sexy and sultry like mine. With me, as always, is my awesome partner, Mr. Jeff Dye, and Wrestling with Freddy starts now. Mr. Jeff, how are you, sir? Feeling good, buddy. Feeling hype. Excited to hear these questions from these wrestling... Uh, what do we call it? What do we... The Frederation. The Frederators. Yeah. Wait, what, or the what, Frienderation. It's, it's the Frienderation, uh, the Frederation, but what, what would they be called? They're the Frederation. They're, they're what make us. What if they're they the say, reason we're here. I'm a Freddy. I'm a Freddy-er. What, what, like, they're in they the Frederation. Say, oh, yeah. They're... they're the, Freighters, like the Freder- Raiders, baby. Fre- Frederites or something. We got to come up with the something. Fre- the Frienderites. That's good. Frienderites. Like the Mennonites. We'll All right, that. we'll do that. The Mennonites. Yeah, Frederites. <laughs> I like it. I'm into it. You guys called in. We appreciate the voicemails. We'll do more of these episodes as uh, as the seasons continue. And we love that the that the community here, the, the Frienderites, is growing. And we have phone calls from all over the world. And we're going to take some of your calls right Friggin' now, so saith Seth Rollins. Hit us with the first one, Mr. Alex, if you please. This first one's coming from Zoe. Here you go. Hi, Freddie and Jeff. Uh, my name is Zoe, and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Very big fan. Love the show. Love listening to you guys every week. Uh, I would love to know, what is your opinion on Reigns versing The Rock at WrestleMania? It's so rumored. Everyone's talking about it. And I want to know what you guys think. Um, If this makes it to the show, thanks for having me on. Love you guys. Bye. What's up, Zoe? First of all, shout out Australia. I love Australia. I love Australians. We made the first Scooby-Doo movie there. So I lived there for six months. Um, I've I've actually been to Melbourne. Love Australia. I miss that country very, very much. But to get into your question, who is the true head of the table? Now, even The Rock has hinted at this. In an interview, he was asked by a very cheeky interviewer. That's something they say in England and Australia, Jeff. They say cheeky. It is cheeky. And uh, they said, you know, Roman Reigns says he's the head of the table. But, uh, you know, you're still here and you're in g- great shape, obviously. You could, you could wrestle. And he said sort of not jokingly, but jokingly, well, you know, I'm, I'm always the head of the table. I'm The, I'm the, I'm the Rock, damn it. Um, so yeah, I actually think this isn't a rumor. I think they're actually trying to plan for this. And I think a WrestleMania with the rock and Roman reigns could happen, should happen. And the reason why has nothing to do with either of those two men. I think that's going to be a big opportunity for the bloodline to get multiple storylines that sort of spread off between the Usos and most importantly, Solo Sokoa. Because I think ultimately Solo is going to be the one that leaves the bloodline. And I think he may even turn babyface and side with The Rock and turn against his big brothers who are his actual big brothers in real life and the the so-called head of the table with the perfect teeth, Roman Reigns. Um, I think you get a chance to tell multiple stories with one match and it gives multiple characters a chance to get over without even having to wrestle. So I think it's much more than a rumor. I hope it's much more of a rumor. Look, The Rock's not going to be able to work the way he did when he was going against Stone Cold and and having those awesome matches, win, lose, or draw. He didn't draw, but win or lose. Um, He's not going to be able to slide in his sweet shoes and and come to an abrupt halt and hit the most electrifying move in, uh, in sports entertainment. But he can for sure pick Roman Reigns up and slam the shit out of him. And he can for sure take a few bumps. You know, I know he got hurt a little bit in the John Cena match, or that was the story. He might have gone in there already hurt and just, you know, use that. But uh, but yeah, I think that's the that's the moment where you try to make solo Sokoa and you and you branch him off from from the rest of them. What about you, Jeff? Um, I would love to see it. I don't know. I'm not up to date on any rumors of it happening or not happening. It sounds like you know, Freddie knows best, but I would love to see it. I think it'd be fun. 
I mean, the, w- like anytime The Rock's in there, it's going to be great. And like, you, you know, he's not going to stay a long time. You know, they're not going to put the belt on him because he's too big of, he's like an A-list celebrity now, but I would still love to see it. I, and it's, and it's also, it's, it's, it's different than the thing, you know, Brock and Roman for 70 years in a row or, or having to see the same matches. Like it'd, <laughs> it'd be a fun, I just, I, i I think it'd be perfect. And also kind of a passing of the torch in a way. And I think it'd just yeah, be awesome. Yeah, big time. Yeah, it'd just be cool to see. You know, like, and then talk about bloodline. The bloodline complete. Get Rikishi out there, too. Just get the whole, just do the whole bloodline. Get them all out there. It'd be fun. I'm excited. Solo, even with the face paint, like, there's so much tribute to to Rikishi out there. And and to Umaga as well, uh, another family member who's passed on. Rest in peace. Um, and Yokozuna. Too- Yoko, yeah, but they don't. Because it he's was the, the Japanese best, the, sumo he's the gimmick. Bloodline. He, that's the bloodline. I, and the, you can give him yes, a flag a and Mr. Fuji, bloodline. but he's still a Samoan. <laughs> yes, of course. But it's not their story. Yeah, They can't just, well, I guess they could because everyone knows now. That the would same way dope. Roddy Roddy Piper was from Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> like Oregon, he's like so, Pacific Northwest. Um, anyway. Zoe, we love you in Australia. I might be making a movie out there this summer, which is your winter. So I'll see you soon, sucker. Mr. Alex, next voice message, please. This one's coming up from Rocky Saavedra. Hey, what's up, Freddie and Jeff? I'm a big time fan of the show. Love the content. So my question to you guys is, if you could bring back an old pay-per-view name along with the uh, custom entrances, I'm talking about like the stages, like the, the aesthetics of a pay-per-view, what pay-per-view would you bring back? I know for me, I was always a big fan of the backlash setup where they had those giant <laughs> spikes just sw- swooshing back and forth. When uh, wrestlers made their entrances, I thought that was always a badass entrance, um, as well as others that I can't really think of right now. But the unique stage that I think was the absolute best, hands down, was the giant fist for SmackDown. So let me know. Love the show. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good one. Rocky, uh, your name's badass, bro. I named my son Rocky. Uh, so your parents have great taste, and so do I. Um, as far as bringing something back, I think most people agree that that fist that's was just so great. I think WWE might even bring that back. I think they miss it too. I know Hunter liked it. I remember him talking about it a long time ago. For me, and I think I might have spoken about this in season one, like episode two. And this will sound weird because I'm usually not that guy. Cyber Sunday was so sick to me. Because the fans got to pick who the guy in the ring or the girl in the ring, in this case nowadays, was going to wrestle. And you were given three options and the fans would vote and your vote was legit. It was not a work. I've, I've asked a million people about this in, in the company. All three wrestlers. So let's say it's, it's Jeff Dyes in the ring. And the people that he can fight are Freddie Prinze Jr. Um, who else? Ryan Philippi, I'm just going to pick people from the nineties or Jason Biggs. Okay. And you're like, man, who do I want to see Jeff, Jeff fight? Do I want to see him fight the guy that had sex with an apple pie and Jason Biggs? <laughs> Cause I know he just squashed Mr. Biggs. He would squash him. That guy's screwing pies, man. He can't wrestle. What do you, do I want to see him fight Ryan Philippi who he's got, you know, a lot of height on and a lot of weight on Ryan's not the biggest dude, but We've seen Ryan in the shooter series on USA as a kick-ass Marine. So he for sure learned how to fight and kick ass. Or do we want to see best buds go at it and, and have to sacrifice their feelings for one another and beat the living crap out of each other for the next 22 minutes? And you actually have control. All three of us would have to work out at least a beginning and end 
to what our match would be. And these wrestlers legit would have to do that. So the wrestler in the ring would say, okay, Je- okay, Freddie, if, if it's you, then ba da 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 we got to do this in the beginning, do that. And you know me, I'd be like, Psh, come on, man, it's going to be me. Forget these other scrubs. And then he'd go to Philippi and be like, all right, Ryan, if it's you, I'm going to smash on you right away and you're going to make a couple comebacks. And then I'm going to smash on you again and get my finisher, the, 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 the jumping jackpot, ba-boom, and smash you down. And then if it's Jason Biggs, he'd be like, Jason, it's going to be a squash match. I'm just going to put it on you real quick. And uh, that's going to be a rap skis for you. And you're going to have to retire because I'm going to break your neck. And Jason would be like, oh, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm only talking <laughs> trash because I know Jason. <laughs> and so then you guys would vote. And of course, it would be like 96% for Freddie Prince Jr. It'd be like 4% for, for Ryan and Jason would be like, wait, is it zero? Is there any more percentages? And you guys would be like, no, go screw a pie. And he would. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would come out and Jeff and I would have a badass match and then it would end in a double count out. So the whole crowd would boo and be so disappointed that there was no victory. <laughs> <in the ring. laughs> so screw you guys. Um, but yeah, man, I always loved Cyber Sunday as a kid. I mi- I even pitched to bring it back when I worked there. Um, but Vince was like, God damn it. No, God, God, that was the shits. And so, uh, so it didn't happen. But yeah, that would be mine. What about you, Jeff? I always loved the, I think if we're talking about like settings, I've always, I always loved the, and they tried to bring it back. It just didn't pull, it didn't hold up in modern time, but Halloween Havoc, I always liked. I think that was just, there was so much crap outside of the thing that they could like props and like Halloween things that they could. You uh, love your props, dude. Yeah. I just, but it was, it it was just two nineties. They tried to bring it back and it didn't work. But then I've also always loved the visual of thunder. Remember WCW Thunder? Like that was like with the yeah. blue and the big the things. And um, also the, that era was so pyro heavy. They loved fireworks and like, you know. It, so I think the reason I like those settings is because it was just so larger than life. There wasn't things that you had to watch on TV that you could only see that they put in like Snapchat, uh, you know, added things that they were it was fire and fireworks and like even the smallest wrestlers still had like big pops of pyro and it, it just felt larger than life. And, uh, and I liked it also. It has an aesthetic in me cause I was playing so many wrestling video games back then. They'd be like, Oh yeah, yeah. pick the, pick this setting so we can, you know, throw them through blah, blah, blah. And so there was a lot of that. Um, cause in the eighties and nineties, every pay-per-view had the same setup, like brawl for all and all that. or not brawl for all. What's it called? Super brawl or beach blast or any of those things didn't really have a setting that was different. It wasn't, it wasn't until like the you know late nineties where you'd see the actual setup was visually different, you know, like hell in a cell or elimination chamber, or Royal rumble. Like they kind of started making the, the settings have a personality, which I love, but I think I would go with thunder. That's what the one that would, that would be the one I would design. That's super old school. And I don't think a lot of people would think about that because it was so unique. But yeah, the Halloween Havoc, I think it worked then because there were so many wrestlers that were suited to a Halloween theme, like with the Mankinds mm-hmm. and the Canes. And it's like nowadays it would be like Shotzi Blackheart out there by herself right. waiting for someone to cut. You know what I mean? Be like, oh, everyone else is just mainstream and blonde or brunette. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So I think that's why the characters aren't suited for Halloween Havoc. But you could make it, AEW's got so It could be like, you know, Luchasaurus versus Shotzi Blackheart. Oh, yeah. In her gender match at Halloween. Well, speaking of those video game things, they're making a uh, AEW video game that was supposed to come out in yeah. December. Uh, the is graphics it, look pretty sick. Oh, and it's got the same controls as WCW versus NWO. It'll be the only game in the history of the world that I'll be able to pick it up and immediately be good at. I know I, 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 I might be unbeatable at that game. Um, Dang, but what, we might have to play this. Oh, show. it'll be fun. We should definitely play. We'll do. We'll do a stream. We'll do a, a Twitch stream. We'll play some. Screw WCW Twitch. Interest. We'll do it on YouTube. Screw Twitch, man. Let's do it then. We'll do it on YouTube. The Yo, um. Yeah, the, let me and, tell you a Twitch story real quick. Oh no, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say if anyone has any hookups or anything, if anybody has any like, I want. I want that game as soon as it comes out. It's. I'm so. I've been waiting thirty years for this game. Like I'm so 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 excited. <laughs> It'll also be the only game where they didn't have to change anything from the original for Sting. He'll have the same look, the same moves, the same. He'll be the only guy that was in WCW versus NWO, the T, T, um, THC game. Oh, not THC. What is the, the THQ. name of the THQ. THQ. And THQ made this game, too. So they, they can just go off. We'll just bring Sting's files over. So screw Twitch. They approached me 
during season one to see if I wanted to do a like a, a live podcast for them because they didn't have any. And I had to educate them that they had like 60 people that were all doing that. And maybe if they just invested a little time and, and paid attention to some of their streamers instead of just looking for famous people that they wouldn't have had to make such an embarrassing email. And then I also let them know that when I had a Twitch channel, they couldn't have been more difficult to deal with and that I would never stream on their platform again. And I told the guy who sent it, I go, I know you didn't work there then. So I don't want you to think this is coming at you, but just know like you never have to email me again. And he wrote back so Yikes. quickly. He goes, I promise I didn't work here then. And I don't know how much longer I will, but I would love to work with you somewhere down the road. I was like, right on dude. Peace. Fuck your channel. So anyway, shout out to you, Rocky. Next caller, please. This is coming from Ernie. Hey, Freddie. It's Ernie from the uh, from Under the Apron podcast. Been a big fan since the 90s. Your side quest about SmackDown is still rooting for you to hopefully do the Fed you've been wanting to do. I have a few questions here. Hopefully you use whichever one you like to most answer. How's the Fed coming along? Is it still happening? Will Jeff die? jump in the ring as well and do some hurricanranas. <laughs> uh, if Cross was your plan A, Killer Cross, did you have a plan B? Any hint on who that plan B would have been, or will you just flat out tell us? All right, cool. Thank you for answering my questions. I'll be listening and have an awesome rest of the year with your family. You too, Jeff. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say goodbye without a pun on one of your movies and such, I'm such a freaking awesome, great fan of yours. <laughs> so hopefully if you do the Fed, it's not just a summer catch and we can all be down to you. Oh my goodness, Ernie. <laughs> Ernie, I love I'm it. not going to, I'm not going to name it after any movies I've done. Uh, thank you so much for the call, Ernie. I'm happy to share a little bit of stuff. I don't like talking too much about it because i feel like when an artist releases any energy on something they're working on before it's done it releases some of the the power and and the momentum behind it um that said i am actively working on it i'm down the road pretty far with a couple different people and uh i'm working hard i have to make sure they can afford it um i'm budgeting my shows as we speak, uh, that's as much information as I'm willing to give out. And as far as like, yeah, the plan A was, was cross and Scarlet. And, um, I don't want to get too much into the story and stuff like that. Although cross knows the story and I told him he happy to, I'm happy to have him use it down the road if he wants to use it. But when he was, uh, rehired by Hunter, uh, my plan B right away was Wyndham who was also a part of my plan a story as well it was going to be Wyndham versus cross uh for the title so i i switched Wyndham to the protagonist instead of the antagonist in this story or the baby face instead of the heel and I, you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna tell you uh so i wanted him and taylor and I just said, I'm going to tell you everything, but now I kind of don't want to. Well, maybe the WWE will hear it and they'll do this instead of the stupid Uncle Howdy shit they're doing now. Um, basically, I had Wyndham and Taylor were always together. For those of you who don't know, Taylor is Wyndham's younger brother. Uh, he plays a character named Bo Dallas on WWE. And basically, how do I explain this in a quick manner? I, I can't really give you everything, dude, but... Basically, Taylor was the id of Wyndham, right? Like he was the ego of of Wyndham. He wasn't even real. No one in the show would ever talk to him, acknowledge him, or look at him. But Wyndham would have full on conversations with him. I thought it was an interesting way to put a wrinkle in in their relationship that most certainly wouldn't be told anywhere else. I thought it was an opportunity for Taylor to show what he can do. As far as his acting, and remember, I want I want a SAG show, a Screen Actors Guild show, a union show. So in order to do that, 
there had to be a scripted part that felt like a television series. Um, so that was going to be sort of Taylor's role in this was this sort of angel and devil on Wyndham's shoulder that we could see. He would os- often be shot in like the reflection of the mirror in Wyndham's dressing room, things like that. But anytime the promoter came to talk to him, they would never even acknowledge him because he legit wasn't there. Um, so yeah, that's given you a ton of information, but since I'm not doing it, I don't, I don't mind sharing it with you. And I've already rewritten, by the way, I'm on like a plan D right now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but yeah, I'm on a, a plan D. So, so many wrestlers are hired and fired that, uh, I'm constantly seeing opportunities to write interesting stories for wrestlers as other opportunities go away. Right. Cause there's so many people that are undervalued or, or I feel used in the wrong way or, uh, or any of that. But anytime I mention someone, they get signed. So I'm done. Uh, I'm done mentioning people. <laughs> so yeah, man, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the questions, Ernie. I, I couldn't understand the name of your podcast, so I can't shout it out. But if anyone out there heard it, I hope you have a good one and, and I hope people go listen to it. But, uh, but yeah, there's a ton of information for, uh, for all you people. And it's something that I'm, that I'm working on very, very actively, very, very actively. There's a reason that I've been, uh, going back to movies and that's, if I can't get the right producer and the right studio behind it, then I'm just going to sell finance. So, uh, so yeah, so there you go, dude. Also, I'm not sure if it might've been, I don't think it was Freddie and I don't think it was Alex, AKA big Al now. Uh, I think I heard Ernie opening and closing like a Mountain Dew bottle or something while he was ans- asking, answering his qu- asking his question. I was like, I like this guy. He likes wrestling. He likes Freddie Prince. And I can, he- oh, maybe it was, was it you maybe? Well, I'm just going to do one for him as like a yeah. shout out. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I was like, I, like I, I, I feel like I know who this guy is. I like him. <laughs> Next caller, please, sir. All right, our last call-in voicemail here is from Daniel Spencer. Hey, guys, this is Impact Wrestling referee Daniel Spencer, and I just wanted to reach out and tell you guys I love the show, and I love what you do. I love your insight, and I would love to hear your insight and take on Impact Wrestling. Um, You guys do an amazing job breaking down WWE and AEW from the fans' perspective uh, to the showbiz perspective. Freddie, you go a little further into the writing and future promoting perspective for you and how you would see things and book things. And I love that, but I just, I really want to know what you guys think of impact wrestling. Uh, you know, we're on every Thursday nights on access TV. If you don't have access to access TV, you can uh, get us on the YouTube subscription page for only 99 cents a month. That's right. Just 99 cents. You get the show every Thursday night at 8 30 PM Eastern commercial free. You can upgrade to the ultimate insiders for four 99 a month and even get our monthly pay-per-views that we do uh, on the impact uh, plus and the ultimate insiders app. It, it, it's, um, it's amazing. I, like I said, I believe it's the best show top to bottom, but I'm biased maybe because I worked there. Right. But as a fan, I feel that way too as well. So I just love to get you out of the watch, get a, give a couple of weeks to watch, maybe do a whole show on just impact. You know, there's a, so much history there from TNA to Impact that, you know, you have a lot to talk about. But, yeah, that's my challenge for you guys. Plus, your daughter, Freddie, will enjoy it because our knockout division is amazing. So she'll she'll enjoy the, the women's division, too. Uh, check it out, guys. And thanks for uh, taking my call. And um, looking forward to hearing more of your episodes. Freddie's daughter doesn't just watch the women's. She likes Bobby Lashley. She's got Jeff Dye taste yeah. in wrestling. She does like some Bobby Lashley, though. She she does. She's been pissed that Charlotte Flair's been off TV forever. So I'll be honest with you. I haven't watched Impact in a long time. I think it was TNA the last time I was watching it, back when when uh, Jay Lethal was doing Ric Flair promos to Ric Flair, I think was probably the last time. I I watched it religiously when Kurt Angle first went there. Um, I think I even watched him and Jeff Jarrett have an MMA match on a pay-per-view. I was one of the guys that that was buying pay-per-views back then i haven't watched it in a long time for multiple reasons um i don't have as much time as i used to i have two kids three dogs jobs things like that um i record njpw every week but i haven't watched a new japan pro wrestling match in i don't know how long uh so shame on me but i promise you this sir i have access tv i have that channel uh, so I don't need the YouTube, as old people would call it. And you have my word. I will watch. I know this. It's going to be better than NXT because ain't nothing in the world worse than that goddamn show. 
and I've given it a chance. <laughs> like once every six weeks, I go, hey, I'll watch a little bit, and it is absolute garbage. It went from my favorite promotion when it was black and gold to unwatchable, unwatchable, like a like a like a local theater production. Like it was t- the last two times I've tried, it was terrible. So if I'm willing to give a shot to something that I used to love and now hate once every six weeks, I damn well can commit an hour. I think impacts an hour long show, maybe two hours, but I can commit, I can commit for sure enough time to watch once. And I will give you some, some honest love. If I don't dig it, I'm not going to crap all over. I really don't like crapping on stuff unless it like, offends me what they're doing to talent that I care about. But I know Bruce Pritchard very well. I know he used to work there back in the day. I know a couple other people who worked there back in the day. So I know a lot of the history of the of the business and I respect what what Jeff built and his abilities as a as a promoter. And uh I just respect your your promo that you cut for your company there, Dan. I thought that was badass. So I want to make sure that everybody hears that and uh we won't cut a single second of it. And you have my word, man. I'll watch. I don't know if it'll be this week, but come the new year, um, I'll do I'll do either a TNA deep dive, or it's not TNA anymore. It's I guess it's just impact now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do a, a deep dive on on an episode. And if it can't fill the whole show, then we'll give a segment to you guys. And if it's something that catches my eye and I dig it, then maybe, you know, we'll slip it in there from time to time. I will watch impact before I watch my next NJPW match. That you have my guarantee on. What about you, Mr. Die? I don't know. I'm, we're already committing 12 hours a week to watching <laughs> wrestling. This is He's asking us to do more, more homework. I don't know what's going on. You know, I remember back in the day, they did some crazy things where they were like, they had matches up on like, and a, and a tightrope above the ring. Cool. And like the cruiserweights were having to like, tightrope over these things to get to a it was like called an x match or something like that there were like two tightropes in the in the shape of an x and cats were just falling off these wires and landing in the middle of the ring i was like jesus christ guys are killing themselves um and i've always heard good things about their women's division i heard that their referees are dorks that's what i heard though yeah i heard their referees are always getting distracted by (laughs) managers and not doing their damn job and not watching the match yeah one of these referees they're so easy to trick you know you just basically got to get their attention and then some that happens behind their back it's like we've got cameras can't we review this stuff let's review especially it, the, especially the ones named daniel they're always getting distracted <laughs> yeah, instead of nerds. counting to one two three or their counts a little slow yeah i've heard Unreal. about that Unreal. dan so i'll be critiquing you sir before i critique anything else yeah we're um, gonna find your matches and we're gonna we're gonna go <laughs> deep dive on that I'm just going to YouTube how many times has Dan been distracted in <laughs> Impact Wrestling. And it's just going to be a highlight reel of all the times a manager ruined a match. But really, it was you, sir. All wrestling exactly. referees. You're all on my shit list right now. Yeah, Pay attention we, to the damn match. It's frustrating. They're too easy to get, get things over on. I will say this. I've seen umpires throw out fans in games for heckling. No refs ever, no wrestling refs ever done that. They got thick skin. Wrestling referees have the thickest skin of any referee in professional sports. So for that, Dan, I salute you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your phone calls. Thanks for the voicemails. Thanks for the fan love. Thanks for the comments and the uh, and the messages. We love you. Peace. We're out. Follow us on Instagram, Wrestling with Freddy. Twitter is WWFreddyPod. Follow us on all the socials so you can submit your questions for the Federation. This has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.